Um, let me welcome you. My name is Katie Ketterer, and um, I'm the project manager for the West Kitsap Way Planning Study. Um, welcome to the virtual presentation for this project. Um, and um, I just want to let you know that this meeting is being recorded, and we will be placing this on our project website if you would like to refer back to it. Go to the next slide. I want to start off with um, just a few tips on how to use the Zoom webinar. Um, we have you should see a navigation bar at the bottom. Um, if you would please use the Q and A window to submit any questions or comments that you have this evening. And if you have any technical issues that we can help you with, you can report those through the chat window. And um, we have some tech support online that can help you with those. Um, just a reminder that all attendees are muted and your cameras are off, um, but when we get into the Q&A, you can raise your hand um, if you have a question that you would like uh, to ask us. Um, all right, next slide. So um, I want to welcome everyone this evening. Um, like I said, my name is Katie Ketter. I'm the project manager. We also have um, a few staff from uh, Public Works. We have um, uh, Tom Nucky, Ned Lever, and Shane Weber here in support of this project. Um, we have Natalie Graves, who will be um, helping us to um, uh, facilitate this meeting this evening and uh, John Davies with uh, KPG, who will be taking us through most of the information in our slides today. We also have Bremerton Mayor Greg Wheeler. And uh, Mayor, if you would like to say a few words, please go ahead. Well, thank you, Katie. Um, and, you know, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm really honored that we get to do so many of these. It's, um, there is a lot going on in our city. This one, is so important because it's gonna it's going to connect um a our, our really really um nice neighborhood the kitsap lake neighborhood to um, a good part of the city and and it's going to modernize those connections and not only for pedestrians and cyclists but to create a smoother a smoother flow and throughput for for motorized vehicles as well um safety improvements you know, uh, neighborhood enhancements that are going to support new development, new business development. It's a, this is an outstanding project. Thank you, um, the staff, the consultants for being here tonight. And a special thanks to the, the citizens who are um, dialing in, our neighbors and residents dialing in tonight to offer their, really their important input on this. So thanks, Katie. Thank you, Mayor. And I also want to welcome all of the participants this evening. We have um, 22 people right now in attendance. So um, it's a really good crowd this evening, and, and we're glad to be here with you. Uh, next slide. All right, um, quickly, let me go over the agenda of what we um, hope to go over this evening. Um, we will go through the, the study's background and the purpose, um, and then we'll provide some information on the existing conditions and the potential solutions based on our analysis so far. Um, we'll go over our community engagement efforts um, and the schedule um, so we can hear from you directly, and then we will have a question and answer session um, followed by some next steps for the project. So I'm going to hand this over to John Davies, who's going to get uh, started with the main part of the presentation. John? Thank you, Katie. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm John Davies. I'm a senior transportation planner for KPG SOMAS. I'm the, the project manager for the consulting team, and this is really a project that we're really excited about. And we're looking forward to uh, hearing from uh, the community and everyone who's in attendance um, and even those who tune in later on on the web page, just 
what are the things that uh, you're interested in about this corridor, how you use the corridor today, and really what kind of the issues you're experiencing along the corridor. So I'm gonna just uh, quickly give you a, an overview here. Um, as seen on the figure, this study focuses on the Western portion of Kitsap Way, which basically runs from State Route 3 to Chico Way, um, North Lake intersection up on the Northwest part of it. Uh, the corridor provides access to homes, businesses, parks, and it's really an important corridor that connects Kits, uh, Bremerton to areas north of there, including Kitsap County and that Northern portion um, going up Chico Way. Uh, Kitsap Way was originally designed as a highway, but its functionality has really been replaced by SR3, which provides a parallel corridor for people driving. For the last few years, the city has wanted to take a fresh look at the corridor and for how Kitsap Way can better meet the current and future needs of the community. To do this, the city secured a federal uh, surface transportation grant um, for this study, which will really help us understand the corridor and plan for the corridor's improvements. Uh, moving to the next slide, uh, the Wet's Kitsap Way Planning Study, which is what we're calling it here, is going to determine a future design for really it's about 1.5 mile segment of Kitsap Way. Uh, as I said before, it's sort of between State Route 3 and Chico Way is kind of how um, we see it. Uh, this study is going to recommend a, uh, a set of improvements that will help improve safety at pedestrian bicycle facilities, um, improve connections to transit, and enhance access to properties, as well as accommodate the existing and future forecasted traffic along this corridor. In this first open house, we really want to get your input for this study. And to do so, I'm going to turn this over, this presentation over to Natalie, who's going to ask our first question. Thank you, John. We are going to do a group participation uh, question through a platform called Mentimeter. So, I am putting a link in the chat right now to everybody. You can click on that chat, that link, um, or you can go to www.menti.com and use the code that's shown here on the screen. So our, our um, sorry, I should also say you can access this on your own computer, on your phone. You can do it on the tablet, um, any other device. Um, and so our question for you is, how do you use the Kitsap Way corridor today? It's a multiple choice. Uh, take a moment to fill it out and then hit submit. And it looks like we're getting some results back. So wow, commute by car. I, I think we we're anticipating some of that. It looks like that's closely followed by visiting the businesses, recreational purposes. I'd love to hear more about that. Thank you. This is great. I'm glad people are able to access this and fill it in. And if there's other, um, we have a category there that says other, share in the Q&A box. If, if you selected that, feel free to put that in the Q&A box right now and I can kind of read it out. Great. So commute by car, I think, John, does that sound like resonates with what we understand with the corridor today? Sounds pretty. Yeah. Visit businesses, recreational purposes, and then working along the corridor is the least. I have some folks that filled out the other, and it says um, access to Jackson Park, the landings on Austin Drive. Um, someone else lives off of the Kitsap Way in this area. So yes. many of you probably live in the area. Perfect. Well, this is great. We will be saving these results. Um, another person says they live on Kitsap Way. Lovely, glad to have so many neighbors. Okay, Aliyah, I think I'm gonna head this back to John to finish.
Well, one of the ways we conduct our evaluation of the corridor is to review how the existing corridor functions and operates. So this includes a review and analysis of a wide range of data, including the existing roadway conditions, the traffic volumes, the speed data, crash reports, and the facilities and travel patterns that people who are non-motorized or people who walk or use a bicycle or take transit, um, what they do on the corridor too. Uh, next slide. So right now, let's look at the roadway itself. Um, Kitsap Way, it's an old roadway uh, with cracks and uneven pavement. It's showing signs of aging and is really deteriorated in places. The corridor has limited stormwater facilities that creates a roadway drainage issues and also water quality issues as the water just sort of drains off into nearby lakes and streams. So here's the bottom line. The roadway is really nearing the end of its useful life and will need to be replaced. So that's one of the things that we're looking at as part of this project. Next slide. So we obtained traffic counts along the corridor and at each of the individual intersections along that way to better understand traffic patterns in the area. So in review of the traffic volumes and all this traffic data, we really have three takeaways from this, um, from our analysis. First is the corridor carries a fairly high level of traffic volumes, approximately 11,000 vehicles per day. Now, in contrast, if you wanna look at Kitsap Way on the east side of SR3 going into downtown Bremerton, that carries about 30,000 vehicles today, uh, per day. So that's you know three times almost as much as uh, traffic as we have on this corridor. Uh, the SR3 interchange area, our second takeaway here, really got a lot of issues with congestion, particularly during these peak travel times. And then our third takeaway is intersections along the corridor really have high volumes of turning traffic, such as Austin Drive uh, intersection, which is pictured in the photo where vehicles are turning left and right um, to access um, Kitsap Way and also to access Austin Drive. Next slide. Uh, safety is an important consideration of this project. And this slide shows locations where key crashes have occurred on the corridor. So reviewing five years of data shows the following things. Um, 150 reported crashes. And the, what I mean by reported crashes was where a police officer was dispatched to um, attend that crash. 115 of those crashes occurred at the intersection. So three quarters of these crashes are showing up at intersections. 51 people were injured. Of those, eight were serious injuries. And unfortunately, we had three fatalities on the corridor. Um, there were two bicycles and two pedestrians who were hit by vehicles along the corridor, including a recent vehicle uh, pedestrian crash at Lyle Avenue. Next slide. So in this slide, I've broken the corridor into three segments to explore some of the causes for these crashes. So in segment one uh, is sort of the Kitsap Way Business District. And the thing that's kind of going on there is there's a lack of driveways and disorganized parking and people kind of park wherever they can kind of find room. And that results in vehicles turning into and out of multiple points. And all those points are locations where crashes can occur. Now our second area 
is the stretch kind of between Lakehurst Drive and Wilmot, where it's really characterized by people traveling too fast. And it really, it lacks a center turn lane. So that means if someone wants to turn at Austin Drive, they have to stop in the lane and hopefully no one comes up from behind. Um, along this segment, we've had uh, many of our worst crashes. And the final area is the SR3 interchange where just the combination of lots of cars and high volumes of vehicles at those two intersections and, and traffic congestion has really led to a lot of those crashes. Uh, next slide. Uh, this map shows the existing pedestrian, bicycle, and transit facilities on the corridor. Well, Kitsap Way to the east has both bike lanes and a sidewalk, and now they've recently extended those uh, where we've got bike lanes all the way to really the east, the to the west side of the SR3 interchange. Um, there are really only a few small stretches of sidewalk even along this corridor. Um, some of the important takes takeaways from this data are people who walk or ride their bikes must use the shoulder areas. And these shoulder areas are really sh shared with turning and parking vehicles. There are no separation for pedestrians and bicycles for vehicles traveling at high speeds. Uh, there are some non-motorized facilities in the area, such as at the interchange, which I mentioned, and at Harlow Drive, but Kitsap Way really doesn't have anything that connects to those other than the shoulder areas of the roadways. Um, we do have transit serving this corridor, and um, there are only two places, one on the sort of down by the interchange and the other up by Harlow Drive, where you can cross the corridor at a, at a protected area, but that's not the area where bus stops are. And so people are basically going to have to cross Kitsap Way in order to ride a bus. Next slide. So what are some of our potential solutions for Kitsap Way? Well, as we mentioned, reconstructing the roadway and improving intersections to reduce travel speeds and improve safety. Um, another potential solution is to formalize some of the driveway access and parking. And this is particularly in sort of that the Kitsap Way business area. Um, there's some potential for enhancing lighting and improving our stormwater facilities so that water just doesn't run off the roadway. Adding sidewalks and bike lanes or a multi-use trail. Adding an improved non-motorized crossing locations such as at intersections or near transit stops. Adding features and amenities to the corridor, really to make the corridor much more attractive and welcoming to all users. Really the idea here is part of our solutions is to bring Kitsap Way into part of the fabric of the rest of the city. So it really feels like you're part of Bremerton, not just this other street. Um, so, Natalie now has two more sets of questions related to your thoughts. So, um, and we wanna get your thoughts on the issues and some of the potential ideas or solutions for the corridors. Oh, wow. It looks like some folks are already filling it out. That's fantastic. So if you haven't, um, yeah, go back to the chat and find the link I just put in there to the Mentimeter. Uh, you can also go to menti.com and enter the code that we're showing on the screen right now. Um, and I'm just going to read some of these off. And, you know, John and Katie, feel free to weigh in on any of these that stand out to you. 
So what do you think are the biggest issues on Kitsap Way today? And we're talking west of SR3. Um, we hear that the condition of the road is awful. Cars go too fast, no room for pedestrians or bicyclists. It's dangerous for all users. Intersections are dangerous at Lyle and Austin and North Lake Way and Chico. It's difficult to drive it or bike it. I live close to it, so it's um, a daily route for my movement. Uh, we're seeing a lot of lack of sidewalks, lack of pedestrian access and crossings, cars that go too fast, no room, um, high speeds. Yeah, I feel like the pedestrian crossing safety is a common theme here. Um, the lack of turn lanes is dangerous. I'm also seeing a little pavement is bad, and um, I, I I know as since we we've walked that corridor, every car going by you hear thunka da thunka da thunka da thunka da thunka da as the as cars drive down down the roadway. It's it's definitely um, something that's yeah our attention to. Yeah. I see another one, John, about stormwater. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that's also part of this uh, scope a little bit. Is, do you want to say anything more about that? Yeah, I mean, there is a, a stormwater system that was built with roadway, which is sort of that little two foot median area down the middle of the roadway. And, but, you know, over time, that's probably not working real well. And there's, um, you know, we noticed some spots where, water is actually percolating up, um, which instead of percolating down. Um, so there, there's um, definitely some issues. And, you know, it's it's definitely a problem for the city because, you know, the, the roadway is completely worn out and the stormwater system is becoming sort of a maintenance issue. And, you um, you know, that does drain off into everything, into Kitsap Lake even. Um, the water needs to go somewhere, so. I see another one that, um, you know, says uninviting area needs to be upgraded to invite biz uh, people to, the in to businesses. Um, we could use some nice restaurants out here. There's a couple comments in the chat. People turning in and out of the garage and the Red Apple. Um, people crossing other places than the crosswalk. Stormwater comes down my driveway and has washed my driveway out during high volumes of rain. So lots of good feedback here. Yeah. So um, this is great. Thank you everybody for answering this question. I think Aliyah, if you advance to the next question, we just have one more for you all. So John gave a little flavor of what we might wanna do, uh, What what, improvements or solutions we're considering, but we want to hear from you. What ideas do you have for the Kitsap Way corridor that you think Bremerton should consider? Someone says, and you can use the same link or if you have it open, it should be up on your screen. Would like a turn lane in the middle. Mm -hmm. The road is ripe for bikeways versus bike lanes. John, can you give a little bit of um, clarification of what a bike bikeway versus a bike lane might be? Yeah, so let me start with what a bike lane is, which is typically the, you put a stripe down on the, next to the vehicle travel lane, let's call it, and that's for the bicycle, so that, that's their lane. A bikeway typically is separated and is um, raised up behind maybe a curb or maybe a planting area. And so it's a separated facility that's not next to the moving vehicles. Perfect, thank you. So it looks like uh, some suggestions for roundabouts. I think I see Lyle as well as Northgate, oh, I'm sorry, North Lake, uh, mm -hmm. sidewalks, lighting, traffic calming features to slow speeds, Another kind of emphasis of bikeway, separated bikeway, um, sidewalks that go all the way around Kitsap Lake. There's high pedestrian usage and too many trucks coming out of the quarry to be safe. Crossing from the NID park to Lyle needs some fixing. Um, sidewalks, parking trees, crosswalks, maybe another roundabout. So it sounds like 
you know, the pedestrian facilities, bicycle facilities, the roundabouts is a common theme I think we're hearing here. Great. So, all right. Any other comments or questions, John or Katie? No, I'm I'm just impressed. These are great ideas. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it's, and it's good that, you know, a lot of what our initial thoughts were kind of are, are matching some of the comments that we're, we're seeing here that, um, you know, some of our ideas we're kicking around really seem to be matching up quite well. So um, this is great. Mr. Wheeler, did you have a comment? Okay. Well, I would say thank you everyone for filling out or doing this exercise with us. We save this information and it will be part of our um, community outreach kind of survey that, sorry, summary that we work with and make available to the public. So thank you again. And I think Alaya, we can go back to the presentation. All right, so um, it's back to me here. Thank you again for participating and um, in that little exercise and um, just know that we will be reviewing all of those answers and considering them. So thank you. Um, the schedule for the project, we'll talk a second about um, what, how, what we're gonna do over the course of, of this next year. Um, so where we are right now, um, we're, we're starting our, our outreach. Um, we have, in addition to this virtual presentation, we also have an online open house that is um, available, and um, it has a lot of the same information that you heard tonight, um, but there's also some, um, some places to add additional comments and things to it, um, and we'll provide that, that link here um, at, towards the end. Um, they're looking at the existing conditions and modeling the future traffic operations. Um, then early into next year, um, we'll be developing some corridor alternatives. So, um, you know, what that means is we'll be kind of putting together all these different ideas to figure out um, what, what will work um, on the corridor and what will meet the community's needs. So with that, once we get some kind of ideas together, we will um, come back out for another online open house and some more outreach. Um, we'll evaluate those different um, alternatives and select a preferred alternative. Then towards the middle of the year, um, we're going to uh, lay out and refine that um, preferred alternative and start some preliminary design. Uh, we'll have another online open house, more outreach to, um, to present um, the plan to folks. We'll do some prioritization and phasing of the, of the different improvements. Um, this, this, the reconstruction of uh, West Kitsap Way, it's a, it's a big project. Um, and so it's likely uh, that it will need to happen in, in phases um, so that we can manage the project and get the money together for it. Um, so we'll be doing that exercise towards the middle um, of next year, towards late next year. Uh, we'll be working on our final, final report and finishing up the study by late 2023. So uh, sometime about a year from now, we'll be finishing it up. Next slide. A little bit more on our public engagement. Um, we are, as we kind of touched on on the schedule, we've got um, multiple online open houses planned and virtual presentations like this one planned at each stage of the project. Um, we've, we have some direct mailings. I think some of you probably already received one. You received an invitation to this virtual presentation through a direct mailer. Um, emails to interested neighbors, uh, comment forms. Uh, we also plan to do some, some tabling events out um, on the corridor to try and grab folks who are headed to the grocery store and live in the area. Um, and we will have a community steering committee, um, which will be helping us along in the process um, and kind of um, uh, giving us guidance through, through the study process.
So what's next? Um, here's your link for the West Kitsap Way um, uh, uh, online open house. Um, Natalie, if you could drop that link into the chat, I would that would be really great. Um, we're going to uh, develop some draft improvement alternatives as we review all of this feedback that we're getting. Um, and the project team will be back out in early 2023 for additional feedback and to show you some ideas that we've come up with. All right, so um, next up we have our question and answer session. And um, Natalie is going to um, help um, facilitate that for us. Yeah, so um, you should have a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in there. We'll work through them. Um, you can also raise your hand and I will allow you to talk. Um, so you can voice your, it looks like we got one. Let's see if I can find who this is. Charles Michael is going to ask a question and you might need to unmute yourself, Charles Michael. I think, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, my question is, how did we come up with grant funding? How, what was sort of the theme of the grant that allows us to do this? Was it something about arterials? Was it multimodal? Or what was the what was the mandate that, uh, well, I'm not sure it's a mandate, but uh, what was the type of grant that we um, were able to capitalize on for doing the design? Um, yeah, so this was um, a surface transportation um, planning grant which means that we've um, been allocated money to do the planning study and, um, and develop the plans into a kind of an early preliminary design. Um, it, it's um, the concept for the, the grant application scored very highly because of um, the lack of connections that were there um, for pedestrians and bikes. And um, the fact that, um, Kitsap Way, West Kitsap Way really connects to downtown Bremerton. Um, it really connects Silverdale and Kitsap Lake, um, all of those areas down to, to Bremerton. So it's it's a very important corridor and that helped it score very well. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Michael. Um, I wanted to read a comment that was provided in the chat. Uh, Lisa says, I'd like to see a unified community instead of a cookie cutter of businesses now on this stretch and create a more aesthetically pleasing area uh, to connect the parks in some way would be amazing. Um, and then we have a question from Ken and Pam Templeman, Templeton, I'm sorry. Uh, when do you anticipate the first phase? And I think that might mean about implementation is how I read that. Yeah, so... Um... We will be um, wrapping up this project in late 2023. Um, and um, at that point, once we have um, different phases prioritized, um, we will prioritize those, you know, along with other projects throughout the city. And um, our staff as a whole does a really amazing job of um, looking at different grant opportunities and really capitalizing on um, on grant opportunity opportunities. So I expect that we would be putting in um, applications for for the phases um, you know as quickly as soon as we possibly can um, and hopefully uh, moving those phases forward. Um, it usually does it will take several years to, um, get the grant funding and to do the full design before we'll actually have construction on the ground. Um, so, you know, we're probably talking about in the five to 10 year range, um, but it, it's definitely a high priority for us. Thank you. We have another question uh, from Connie. She asks, who will make up the steering committee and how can someone be a part of this committee? Yeah, if you're interested in being a part of the committee, um, please feel free to reach out to me and um, send me an email. We have um, uh, several different, we have um, internal folks, um, staff 
from Public Works. We have uh, planning staff. We have um, we have different uh, leaders from um, Bremerton School Districts, um, from Kitsap Transit, um, Kitsap County, because we do connect to uh, uh, Kitsap County with this project. Um, we also have someone from um, the the supportive housing um, that just went in there um, on the corridor, um, Pendleton Pendleton Place, um, and I'm sure I'm missing quite a few others. But we do have a, a pretty good size community steering committee. Um, always looking for more people to um, to help us with that. So if you're interested, just please give me an email. Great, and it looks like someone. Uh, is interested. So, and your email is uh, listed at the um, end of this PowerPoint. So, yes, thank you. Another question is anything to address safety around the NAD during the interim? Um, we use this intersection daily and have experienced a very large number of uh, near misses and almost tragic events on vehicle foot and also on bicycle. Um, yeah, I think I would um, send that one to Shane to answer if he doesn't mind. Hi, Katie. <laughs> yeah, um, so thanks for sending that over to me. Um, uh, so we, we recognize that, um, that Kitsap Way um, has, has uh, accidents and safety uh, issues and uh, that's the, uh, the purpose for this planning study is to be able to get ahead of that. Um, uh, as part of uh, as part of this study, and um, as you know, uh, in terms of what we have in the meantime for for any safety improvements out there, um, you know, I don't have anything um, right now that's that's keyed up. Um, but if you want to send me an email um, and let me know of uh, of you know the safety issues that you see out there uh, and specifics, that's something that we can take a look into uh, in the meantime um, and see if there's anything that could possibly be be done uh, in the interim. Appreciate that. Um, otherwise, um, you know, as part of this quarter project, uh, we're going to be looking at implementation implementation of of uh, uh, projects as part of it because it's a, a large project um, sure. and so as part of that um, you know uh, the safety items uh, could be uh, uh, looked at as far as uh, the priority there so that's the other uh, thing that could be done uh, thank Shane, you Katie. Shane do you mind yeah. putting your email in the chat to absolutely I will do that. if someone was interested yeah absolutely I'll do that right now and, right. and thank you and I'll add in a little bit to what Shane said that as part of our project, we'll be looking at not just how do we phase the entire construction of the corridor as sort of build the whole thing, but also really focusing in on are there ways that we can do sort of a shorter term um, improvement that would then work in with sort of the, the longer term vision for the corridor. So th that's something we definitely do have in our minds. All right, we have time for just a few more. Um, I'm gonna read a comment. I think this is a comment. Um, this would be, this should really be tied into Kitsap's road, Kitsap's roads department plans to properly link this to Kitsap's north south corridor. A roundabout at the transition to Chico Way would be much safer. Uh, with space on the north side, a shared use path should be a consideration. It was just a comment. Uh, one question is, will the steering committee meet virtually or in person? We know that. Uh, virtually at this point. Okay. And how complete will the design uh, be at the end of 2023? Um, we'll have really good conceptual design and uh, something that's going to give us really good uh, cost estimates that we can move forward for um, uh, funding applications. Um, we're also doing the full survey of the of the corridor, so that really puts us ahead um, with the design to be able to have a really uh, firm understanding of um, you know what's going on out there on the corridor. So. Um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, I think at, at the end of this, we will have 
um, you know, some really good layouts of what the what the corridor is going to look like. Um, and we'll know, you know, where there are places that maybe need, you know, retaining walls or, um, you know, that kind of thing. So um, it'll be, it will be pretty, pretty good um, uh, preliminary design looking forward to. Yeah. And, and one, one of the purposes of, of doing sort of this preliminary design layout is to get those really good cost estimates. So then when we apply for grant funding, we know that we have enough funds to be able to build it because the last thing we want to do and the last thing the city wants to get involved with is running out of money before you get your uh, project built. So, Great. Well, I think that is it for our Q&A that's in the queue. Um, so I, I'll pass it off to you, Katie, to wrap, wrap us up. Well, I do see, um, I do see Paul Dutke's hand up. Oh, let's look. Thank you for calling that out. I'm going to, Paul, I have allowed you to talk if you want to unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. I got it. Um, it's Diane Iverson, his computer worked and mine didn't, <laughs> but um, when you're on Austin Drive facing Lyle, whether you're in a car or I'm generally in a car when I'm there, um, what happens, and this might be a quick fix, what happens is you have cars go on each side of you. There's really only one lane, but because there is real estate after the pillars, people uh, go to the right and they go to the left and then they block each other's views and it makes it more difficult for them to either make a, a left or a right. So some paint defining that there's only one lane, I don't know if people would abide by it, but it's truly the scariest part of that intersection, especially from three o'clock to 5.30 uh, because people are avoiding um, uh, SR3 at, uh, at rush hour. So just a suggestion on an immediate way to maybe try to have some, some of that chaos be um, under control. Thanks, Diane. That's a really great comment. And, and that might be, you know, example of, of some low hanging fruit that, that uh, can be knocked out early. All right, am I missing anybody else? I'm looking for the last remaining hands. I think we've got everybody. I'm gonna pass it to you, Katie. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. So where are we at? Sorry about that. Um, so we have a voluntary demographic survey um, for our Title VI program and if, any of you wouldn't mind, um, we would appreciate it if you would take that survey. It only takes about two minutes um, and it's totally voluntary and totally anonymous. So um, check that out for me. And uh, Natalie has put the link to that in the chat. So you can, um, you can link directly to that or copy it to your web browser. Okay, next slide. All right, so again, thank you all so much for um, spending your Tuesday evening here with us to talk about the West Kitsap Way Planning Study. Um, we have the project website where you can sign up for email updates and look for mailers coming out for future engagement opportunities. We sure hope to see you all um, again as we continue this project and to hear from you again. Um, I'd like to encourage you to um, spread the word about the corridor study. Um, like we do have the West Kitsap Way um, online open house open right now. So that's a great link to share with your neighbors and, um, and friends. So they can join in on the, on the, um, on the project. Um, and my contact information is here on the screen. So um, if you have any further questions or you'd like to reach out and talk about the project, please feel free, please give me a call. So I think we at that, um, and we are all wrapped up for the evening. I thank you again for your time and I hope you all have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs>